Hi you guys, it's Acrylic Painting Monday and today we're going to be doing pumpkins in a churchyard. It's a Halloween uh, festive painting. This is the kind of painting you, you could paint and have it. Every time you celebrate Halloween you can put this one on the wall and celebrate it. Or maybe you have a friend that celebrates Halloween want to do this as a gift for them. I think this is really fun. It's just it's got all your different colors of oranges and it's got sort of a purple glow to it. Um, some really nice touches in this when you look at the the purple which is the complement of of um, yellow and then you've got uh, orange and there's a little tiny bit of blue up here for that complement to play out a little bit so this is a fun easy easy uh, peasy uh, tutorial I, I promise you it is e easy it, peasy painting it's easy peasy painting and um, and the traceable is on our website like paintingwithginger.com and uh, you have to be an orange member above, but uh, you might want the traceable on this. I think so. Might, this might be one where a traceable might be helpful. And I would say some Posca pens. You might want a, a white Posca pen and maybe a black one would be helpful too. But you don't have to have If you have a tiny brush, you can use that too. Um, I'm going to recommend a T-square to get your lines straight up and down. But... Um, I, I think you got this, you guys. I've been watching you paint over the years. And those of you that follow me, uh, this is not going to be a problem for you. And if you really like, uh, if you really are enjoying um, this Halloween theme, I suggest uh, if you're an Academy member or you want to join our Academy, you try our zombie cake. That will be, that's our Halloween uh, themed uh, painting uh, for our Academy members uh, for red, purple, and blue. And um, so that's a might be fun to just, uh, you know, that we've got so many holiday, beautiful holiday uh, paintings from Christmas to um, uh, clear through, well, clear through the fall season, both on, on, on YouTube and for the Academy. We've got some special ones coming up. You might consider a, giving yourself an Academy membership for Christmas. Start your wish list now. Tell them you need it early. <laughs> so follow <laughs> along with this. This is a 12 by 12 painting with a square frame. We got the frame at Jerry's Artorama. They're the only people I know that sell square frames, but I think the black one looks pretty good. So you've got pumpkin in a, in a churchyard, and uh, have fun with this. All right, let's scoot on down. All right, so we're going to start off on a 12 by 12 canvas, and I've got a bronze background for our pumpkin, but you could use... Um, uh, probably um, a light yellow too would be all right. You could have that. That would be one you could use. Um, I just, we happen to have the bronze. I thought I'd try it and see what it was. This is like a bronze gesso from Holbein, but I wouldn't go out and buy anything. Um, so we just, we just tried it out, but um, you want a, you want a, uh, you know, I would say a fairly light background. You could also do a light gray background would probably work really well too. So those are some suggestions on how you might paint this. Um, you can see I've got him sketched out. Your, um, the colors we're going to be using are uh, Payne's gray, uh, which is black and ultramarine blue, titanium white, um, cad yellow, medium, and we want cad yellow light too. And I had that somewhere. Where did I put that? Cajello light. Well, I'll find it when, before we have to have it. And then uh, cadmium orange, cadmium uh, cadmium red light, cadmium red medium, naphtha crimson. Uh, this is a doxine purple, and this is like a mauve purple. So either one would work. Thalo blue, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. So those are our colors. Okay. Yeah, the yellow oxide, and then, let's see, I'm still looking for the cad cadmium yellow light, which I forgot to put out, but I have it right here, see? So let's... Yeah, see, there's proof. We have it. Here, let's just do that. All right, so that's what we got to go with, and um, we're going to start with the uh, background. And this, the, what we want to paint is on the inside of this a window here. We want sort of a blue-gray color. So I'm going to take my mixing palette and I'm going to start with white because it's going to be 99% white. Yeah. And I want a little bit of the Payne's gray like that. And then I want a little of the phthalo blue. There you go. That says, let's try a little more Payne's gray. 
All right, see that? So we're going to do kind of two colors. We're going to do that, and then this will be the lightest color, right? So if we come in here like this, kind of around our um, uh, circle, that's going to be that's going to be our lightest blue. Then we're going to get a little bit more of the Payne's gray in this one, like that, and we're going to say this is our lighter blue, kind of a gray color. Here like that. Now the trick is wipe your brush off and using the side of it sort of blend in this light. Bring it out into here like that. Soften it. Okay. And we can even have something a little bit darker here in the corners like that. Just kind of take that and a little bit on your brush and just sort of soften that like that. We'll just bring on that down here around our pumpkin. Okay. So that's that's pretty easy, yes? Okay, so we're going to say up here, in this area, in the center, kind of just get the blue off the brush now. And we'll see if you see me wiping it on the paper towel. All right, now I'm going to start with white and a bit of cad yellow light with that Payne's gray and I want this sort of a little bit more white. I want this to have a little bit more of a yellow glow in here so we're going to say this is the circle our lamp is. Now yeah no I'm going to dry that and then show you why okay one of the things about doing a premiere is that you can, it allows you to dry and do a couple coats of paint. You can really kind of fiddle with that a little bit more than I can in a live broadcast, all right? So then I'm going to take some zinc white, which um, uh, I have somewhere here. I'll just put a little zinc white. That's your transparent white, all right? Don't need a lot. Wipe the brush off. Now look, when you're using zinc white, you just really flatten it out like this. And we're going to go over the edge here like this. Just like, a, like it's a halo. And we're going to say this is glowing. And this is how you get that effect. Is it good to know? And we're going to go on the inside too. All right. Now I'll take some titanium white right here in the middle, and I'm going to put our our um, light. All right. All right. Now that's that's got kind of a nice glow to it. Now, if I needed another coat on this, let me just put another little bit of the Payne's Payne's gray here. If I needed another coat on this, um, take a little zinc white now in Payne's gray and come up here like this. I can darken this a little bit if I need to, or lighten it. But basically, I'm pretty happy with that. That's really all that needs to happen on this window. It's pretty pretty mysterious. All right, now I'm, we're going to take a little bit of burnt sienna in these colors and add to that mixture a little bit of that light yellow. See this? And we're going to come in here like this and say that that's this inside of the the window, right like that. Let's just, there we go. It's the inside, yeah? And then we're going to take some Payne's Gray 
can say this is the outside. It's a little bit easier if you do it like that. You're much more likely to get it a little bit more even than if, like this. So that's the that's your window out here. Okay. All right, with me. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna and zinc white, mix it into that, and say there's the outside of this wall right here, like that. And I've got the inside of this wall, which is burnt umber. I needed to come in here like that. Let's put a little burnt umber and purple together. It's the color we want, burnt umber and purple. I'm going to take a little of that purple and zinc white. That's just dazzling purple and zinc white and add it to this brown mixture that we just had. And add a little bit of this purple color here like that. There we go. Now, this is a pretty easy painting because once you get that part done, right? Um, we're just going to switch brushes, get a larger one like this, and we're going to take um, purple and Payne's gray, all right, and burnt and burnt sienna, okay? And we're going to come around here like this. And paint in the sides. I'm going to go around. I think I can just paint my leaves in. I'm pretty good. I don't have to paint this around my leaves. I know how to do that. I can and I can have a reference so I can see where it is. So I'm going to just say I'm going to paint this color. So it's purple, burnt, uh, paints gray, and um, burnt sienna. Those, that's the color. All right, we're going to come over here on this side and do the same thing. Make sure it's dark enough. We're going to come under here like this with this. There's all these colors where everything is dark. It's all dark around here. This pumpkin. Uh, let's put a little bit more burnt sienna on this part here as we go around the pumpkin right like this. We'll just add a little bit of burnt sienna to it make it look a little bit browner. Come around our pumpkin. And again, we've got a bit of a table right here, oh, but it's pretty dark. Here we go. So we've got a bit of a table and um, like a ledge. Okay, so let's. Uh, let's take this color and do this now because I need this a little darker than I got it. Tiny bit of water on the brush, just a little bit to kind of wake it up a bit. And a little bit of this burnt sienna and burnt umber 
on this side of our pumpkin. I'll just, I know I want all this dark in here, so I'm just going to erase that. The only thing is I, I can put the leaves back. I feel I can get those back. Okay. I'm going to come up on this side of the pumpkin like that. Come down here like this. And if you lose anything, which I think I did, I lost a little bit of this. I can just put it back. Okay. All right, so then we've got this sort of light color in here. All right. That's pretty easy. All right, so we got that there. This here, we got that there. A little bit more of the dark brown color right here by the I think I need this to be just darker. We're going to just simplify this a little bit. There we go. And um, there we go. Let's just. Purple is good in here because it's very Halloween-y. All right, so that's that's kind of good. And then I'm going to say the table in front here is this sort of purpley blue color. It just kind of disappears into this. We don't know what happened to the table here, but we know it's kind of darker in here, and it just, there you go, just. All right, so that's, that's what we got so far. All right, and that's a good, that's a good place to dry. And we've kind of got all that in, but wait a minute, we see where we didn't get some color on here like that. All right, so let's dry everything really well and keep going. Oh, yeah, we should thank them, John. That's a good idea. You did. I mean, a little purple phthalo blue and burnt. Um, oh, we're just going to bring this table out here like that and on this end. And then I want to take my T-square like this. And I didn't get this uh, straight up and down right here. Can you see that? You see, that was close, right? But it could, I'd like it a little crisper. So, yeah. Crisper. There, nice, right? Uh, I can glaze that back. It's a little lighter than I want it, but I'm worried about that. I wanted more of the shape, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and, because um, we've dried this, okay, I'm going to take some um, Posca pen 
I'm going to take a gold one. Want me? And yeah. Then you just push it hard to get. You know, don't keep shaking. You just push right like that. Tell pin comes in, ink comes out. This is really pink. Let's try shaking it again. Is that going to write? I don't think I give up on the gold. Let's try brown. Try brown one because I'm I'm not happy with the gold. It's not coming out nicely. All right, that's coming out. So what I want to do here, uh, let's see. I either want to do that or I want chalk. What is it going to be? Let's go with chalk after all of that. So I know that, for instance, I've got a, a line. I've got a circle that's coming around here like this. Yes, and then got a circle around my light here, and then I've got something that starts here and here. And right there. And um, here, let's do this. Okay. Then I've got one coming down from the center here and here. All right, so now that I know where that kind of those lines have got to go, then I can take a smaller brush and uh, some Dawsoning Purple and Payne's Gray. And let's get our paper towels back now on the side here. All right, so we're going to we're going to say that we've got a light that's coming out like that. Let's put a little white with that color. Don't need it that dark. Kind of a kind of a gray color. All right, and we're going to say that we've got a... Ooh, I want this lighter. Where's my palette here? Let's see, it's ink white. Where'd that go? Don't want this real dark. Remember, there's always paint on your brush. So when you're doing something like this, you can you can just soften the soften it just by doing that. Let's come around their circle. This is meant to be a little bit rough, uh, not really 
as dark as I've made it. Don't get these too dark. This has almost got some brown in it. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a little bit of white and cad jello light, mostly white. Get this a little more glowy. Kind of thin these lines down a little bit. So we just want to suggest that that's a, you know, the light, lights there like that. I'll make that a little bit lighter. But this doesn't have to be too perfect. We just want kind of, kind of eerie looking, right? Now, remember I said this was a little dark. So if I take a little bit of purple and water, I can just tone that down. And that's, ooh, that's interesting. That's got kind of an interesting glow to it already, doesn't it? I'm almost tempted to do a little bit of that right here, too. Yeah, almost, yeah. Yeah, I, it really wasn't in my original design, but... Uh, let's see, where's the raw umber? You know, you can always tone anything down with raw umber. Because that's a little brighter than I want. Though, you might like it. So, I'm just... I don't know if I'd do anything with it until it dries. Obviously. Yeah, we can always start. All right, we'll just leave that for now. Well, it could look good, wouldn't it? Yeah, it could be. We just don't know, right? So, you're right. We don't know, John. That could look good. So, then we want to take some white here. And um, we're going to say that there's a, um, bit of a wall here. And, um. Uh, That's got to be kind of a brown burnt umber color. Pretty dark on top. We're just barely talking about it. This is where the zinc white can come in. You can do, you can indicate a little bit of architecture without actually putting any in. Okay. All right, so we're just suggesting something, sir, but we're not saying what. Yeah, I think that's going to be a little distracting, right? But we've got the zinc white, and as long as we're Talking about distracting, we're going to do some, that's like this. A few cobwebs, you know, kind of age that, um, 
this out a bit. Okay, so that's kind of creepy, right? And then we got the, well, it is. A little. All right, so let's take some cadmium orange, all right, and come up here on our pumpkin. It should do pretty well with this. And again, this is one of those things where, um, We're just going to going to need a couple coats to really um, be bright. And of course, it'll be darker down here at the bottom, but we're getting getting the orange tones on here. And as long as we're doing it, we're just uh, going to go ahead and get our pumpkin situated. All right, let's do this again down here with the um, with these guys. Let's just let's just I give up on the faces. We'll just do those later. Yeah, this is the kind of painting, if you don't take the time to dry it, you're going to have a hot mess. This is why we do it in a premiere. Here's a little bit of cad red medium. I think we're just going to put the teeth in ourselves later. All right, now let's dry this. It'll look better. All right, I really am not fond of that purple, but I'll leave it, you guys. I'll I'll, I'll leave it for now. Um, we're we'll just focus on the pumpkins now. We've got a little bit of burnt um, burnt uh, sienna. Okay, that's um. Uh, that goes on the bottom of this guy like that. We got a burnt um, burnt umber um, stem to it. A little bit of there you go. Okay. a little bit of the burnt uh, umber down here at the bottom. The, autumn, the bottom kind of melts into this um, painting down here. It's here, but you don't see that much of it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, let me go back into the burnt sienna. When you're doing lines on a pumpkin, they, they're doing this. So this way and that way, okay? All right. Now, as long as I'm fooling around here, let's take some cad yellow light and... Kind of get the feel of the thing, right? Probably would have been better to do those white first, but we get you get the idea of what I'm going for, right? So. And I've got a little bit of this 
orange coming up on top like this. So when you're doing stuff like this, um, think about um, like this, this whole stem is all twisted. So you would want to have, um, you would want to have some lines doing stuff like that. See what I mean? You would have your highlights twisting like that. Does that make sense? All right. So let's dry this and then do our next layer on our pumpkin. All right. So we're going to start with our CAD, uh, CAD red, I guess CAD red, um, CAD red light, not the cadmium orange. And we're going to come up here like this using our angle and allowing for the, um, you want these lines very thin here where this is, right? So we're allowing for the, um, the highlights of our pumpkin to be here. And this kind of goes up into his stem a bit. And then we've got a, a leaf coming out of here like this. Okay, and I've got another one. I'm just going to get a little yellow oxide with this. I've got oh, too much paint. Let's try again. I've got another one coming right up in here like that. Another little leaf which we're saying is a leaf and maybe something lighter right here. So, let's see what, see what I'm doing. So that kind of gives me an idea of where I need to be, right? So, I know I want a little, oh, see, see, you get these globs of paint. You can't paint with that. You gotta knock it off your brush. Here we go, so, something a little lighter up here like that. Here's some uh, naphtha crimson. I want you to see what happens when we add some red here. I think I'm probably, cad red medium is probably better color for that with a little cad red light. So just a combination where it's dark. A little bit of burnt sienna. With a burnt number where it's a little bit darker down here. So kind of below his eyes, it's a little bit darker than you'd think. And of course, your light's coming from the top like that. And then your um, your twisties are coming like this. That's just a little bit of light white with the browns with your stem. Almost a little bit of a purple cast to it. Okay, so don't lose your whole stem here. You want to keep the dark too, but you're going to bring it around like this. And All right, so as that, um, set twist this way. Okay, there's our twisted stem, and I'm going to shorten it like about like this. I'm going to say, whoops. This is why you got to make sure you have a don't have any white on the brush. I'm going to shorten it right here. Okay. All right. So there's my stem. Now, I just suggest another crossbar on this window, right, like this. All right. There we go. 
in a little bit more. I just need a little bit grayer here like this. It's kind of that tombstone gray, not to be unkind about it, but you know what I mean, right? All right, so I'm still not sure about that, John. Just not sure. All right, so we'll take a Posca pen. We have so many of these, I don't know why I search for them. All right, I'm gonna take a Posca pen. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, make sure that we're happy with his with the shading on him. Let's take a little bit of the brown and the red together. Let that burnt sienna, a little bit of red here. So I want to come under his, really come under his nose. There you go. Make that a little darker. As long as we're in those dark colors, let's put those on the. Let's let's put those on there. Our little pumpkins too. What's that burnt sienna? And let's get a little bit of brighter red up here. And then we'll get some brighter orange on the top. Like that. All right, so I'm pretty Pretty happy with those, as long as we're just doing stuff. Okay. Now, see, I got into white there, and I didn't want that. Okay, it's all right. That happens, just wipe your brush off and start again. There you go, okay. Now, I guess we need a tinier brush than I was using to get the, here's some white. Um, this line needs to come up and this one does this way like this. All right, now for the Posca pen, what we're going to do is we're going to say that we've got his two teeth like that coming. And it's going to come up here and up here, right? So This is going to come down in a jagged. Yes. Yes and yes. Make sure you've got this done pretty well. All right. Okay, now let's do them on this guy too. This is the fat uh, Posca pen. These are the triangles going straight down, nose going straight up. And then we'll just do something with the tooth. You could put your own faces on too. You don't have to use my faces. Maybe you've been doing pumpkins for a year and you're going ginger. Those are terrible faces. I can't believe you did that, right? And, and, and you probably do. I wouldn't argue with you, okay? So, all right. So, what do we know for sure on that? Well, we know that, for instance, that's going to be white. Yellow only paints over white, right? So we're going to go ahead and paint those 
in. If you get too much paint on the brush, you, you can't control it. Yeah. All right, so already it's, well, we're getting the eye hang of this, aren't we? Aren't we? You guys, don't you think so? So we're going to get the, this is probably a little more of a painting than I would do for normally for YouTube. It's the holiday season, and everybody, Halloween is sometimes bigger than Christmas in a lot of families as far as what they decorate for. They're willing to spend a little bit more time on something like that. I have found. Um, all right, so what else do we know? Well, that's drying. Let's talk about what we know for sure. Well, we're going to work on this table a little bit, all right? So it's kind of a blue-gray color with some white. Let's see, let's just come over here, get our Posca pen out of the way, and, and kind of mix that. Let's take some zinc white. Yeah, that's pretty good, like that, right? And we're going to say that this table in here is pretty good. Then we're going to get a little bit of purple and mix with that, and a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the paints gray because it's got blue in it right and let's well let's see that's all right we have to tone that down so let's put some yellow in it yellow oxide in that want to gray something to purple add yellow okay now look what that did that kind of it's purpley but it's not like bright in your face purple right Yeah, and then let's put a little bit of burnt sienna with it. Like that. So we're just saying that this table's this way. And then back in here, it's more burnt sienna. Back under here next to this pumpkin here and this one. It's kind of going to be darker around these guys. A little burnt sienna, be something darker under here. Okay, so burnt burnt um, umber. Let's get that darker. It would help if I could put this down. All right, so now. On these ta on on the pumpkins and stuff like that, we want them to it's darker next to them. Then take a little bit of orange and put that there. A little bit of burnt, kind of a redder color here, like this, because we're going to imply that there's some orange. This is orange leaves. I've got a little bit of uh, Payne's gray. I'm going to get this a little bit darker under here again. Didn't get all the way down to the bottom of my canvas with this. Okay. Wipe all the brush, paint off the brush down. See if you can't. Let's just get a clean brush and have any paint on it and smudge that in. See what I mean? Doesn't have any paint in it, so it can blend that in pretty easily because we're not um, talking about that right anymore. All right, so, yay, huh? <laughs> yay? Well, I'm just going to say there's a bit of a windowsill here, and just come here like that. And, uh, I'm sorry, I can't stand that. You can leave yours in.
more paints gray. All right, so that's all right. That feels a little bit more like what I was going for here. All right, something like that. All right, so now uh, we got a little bit of orange here. And there's going to be some leaves, but I'm just going to suggest there's some leaves just by doing this. Just having some straight lines coming this way. I can suggest falling leaves. Yes. Without actually having to put any in. And we lost our pumpkin edge here for some reason. We lost this guy. It's the nice thing about pumpkins, you can put them back. They all have weird little shapes too, so if you got the shape off, you could you could put it back and you'd be all right. Okay. That's, having these different reds really helps paint this because you know you've got it darker you know the darker brown on the bottom like that there you go all right so pretty happy with those so i'm going to just take a moment drying everything while i still can easily do it what do you think john all right so um one thing we can do is we can just take our uh, white chalk, which we have some somewhere, white pencil. We use these every um, video, so I don't understand why we're looking for these all the time. I just every like twenty of them. Which one? Oh, like? uh, here's one. I found one. They're just they're getting smaller and smaller. All right, we got some. So, all right. So what we know is we've, we've, got, we've got, well, that didn't help. Let's try this again. All right, so what we know is we've got some, we've got some leaves coming out like that. Just draw the, the vein in the middle and you'll get it. Okay. And we've got some crookedy branches coming out like this. Let's uh, move this because it's wet now. And um, we've got a couple coming down like that on the wall. We've got some, do the vein. That's the easiest way to do these. You know, and then maybe we've got one coming out like this. All right. And I want one up here that's doing all right. Okay, so we got all those creepy things, and then we got some real creepy things coming out this way. But let's put in a, a few of our uh, leaves. Yes. All right, and um, in front we've got, remember, you're going to put the vein here first, and then it's going to come out, and that'll be your point. Yes? If you want something wider, you can. And, you know, there's, you can just suggest an odd shape of a leaf. You don't have to have them all perfect. You can just suggest that there's some leaves here just by just doing some odd little broken shapes. Let's see. I remember I told you to just do the. Like that. We're just going to say something's here. Something's over here. And then particularly here, we want a nice big one. 
Let's see, I don't like that one. Let me just do this. All right, so it's gonna go. It's gonna go this way. There we go. And again, you can just suggest. You can just just suggest a a, a leaf just by. You know, just having, you know, something like that. You don't have to have it. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, make sense when you do these? Okay, so let's start by taking the Posca pen. We're going to do a fine point one. And... Um, Make sure they're crookedy. Okay, with me? Now. So now we're going to take the black Posca pen. Come underneath those like that, make this a little wider. As long as we're playing with the pen. Okay. So, uh, and when you're doing with a Posca pen, you want to dry it. So in the meantime, we'll just, we'll just color in some leaves while we're waiting for that to dry. Yes and yes. All right, so I'm going to take some uh, yellow oxide and um, cadmium orange. Nothing's ever too color, so maybe this side of the leaf is a bit brighter, darker. If you want this to not look cartoony, take a moment and... Um, uh, make sure that you're you're adding highlights where they need to be. Let's see. Let's take a say we've got a leaf up here. Maybe this leaf is gold. Okay. 
Um, a couple of these you may have to go over a few times, but that's all right. So you're suggest suggesting that there's maybe something up there that all have to be so perfect. Yeah. Now let's come over here and get some kind of some gold leaves. Maybe we're going to say that there's one here. Kind of next to this one. And um, I want one out here, even though I didn't draw it in. Let's go back to orange. Kind of vary the colors on this. All right, so let's take some yellow and add the orange light and say, um, this is the cadmium, this is the cadmium, uh, or just the or cadmium orange, right? Not the orange light or anything. This is just cadmium orange. You really can't mix this color easily. This is a kind of painting if you were trying to do this with um, um, student paints that you'd be less than successful. Let's try a little bit of a burnt sienna one here, a little, a little bit darker color. So before we get too far with that, but you can see how nice this is looking, right? You can't you? Don't you guys feel like it's, you know, I mean, you can just see how this is. And I think this would be the kind of painting you could get out every year and be really happy with it for your decorations. All right, now I want a little bit of the, I'm going to just rinse the brush. It is Halloween, isn't it? I'm going to take the CAD, CAD Yellow Light, just because I'm just curious, aren't you? And just come in here like that with the yellow. We'll do that up on his nose too. And eyes. Now the secret to this, there's more secrets? Absolutely, and I'll show you that in a minute. But you just remember, nothing is ever just one color, so just keep that in mind, right? When we put something like this in. But I, I want a glow from the yellow on the table up here and down in here and even some cad yellow medium uh, yellow just I want to say that there's a glow in here that's from this Uh, because, of course, it's going to glow, and why is that? Because it's got the, the lights from these eyes are glowing, right? And uh, this one's going to be a bit lighter here, too, because... It's picking up the glow from the... Um, from this guy, and he's picking up the glow on top here. Sometimes if you understand why you're putting the colors, it makes more sense, doesn't it? Because you're saying that this is going to be a little bit lighter up there, even with a little bit of... Don't be, have globs of paint on your brush. Just get it on the tip part. There you go. See, like that? Uh -huh. 
Yes and yes, yes and yes. And how about over here? Because this is getting whooshed from there. Yes, that's why you're putting it. Yeah. Ooh, come on, you guys. Okay. Isn't it cute? This is our brightest side because it's on, it's got the glow here from this, that, right? Same here. This is going to be our brighter side because it's the light's kind of spreading out that way. Mm. We might have a might have a bright red one just up here somewhere. Now we're gonna take that same orange and we're gonna come wipe all the extra paint off and so you just you just want it on the tip of the brush. You don't want it on the whole brush. You guys know that, right? Which is why you see me. Um, woo, huh? Spookier and spookier. Trying to make those eyes sparkle. All right. I mean, come on. How f <laughs> I think this is really fun myself, but you know, I amuse easily. <laughs> it is. It's a little bit of the yellow oxide. Um, and you'll notice that we're varying how bright we're making. Some leaves are darker than others. And of course, acrylics dry darker, so some you have to come back and pop the color up a little bit on. Remember, yellow and red make orange. You can, you can vary how bright these oranges are by just adding a little bit of yellow. Okay, like that. Just saying that there's a highlight here and there. It doesn't have to all be the whole leaf. Okay. Now, uh, let's, um, this is dry now. Okay, so I'll show you what I want to do with those. I'm going to take some burnt sienna and a little bit of water. We could use glazing medium, but I think in this case we don't want you to have to buy anything. We're going to glaze back this branch like that. With that, it's just a little bit. That's that can be nice. And the other thing we can we can do it is we can do a little um, purple glaze too. So you have a kind of a choice on these branches. We can do kind of purple. 
Um, I just make sure I brush is really rinsed off. Now look what happens when you put a glaze of purple over the white. Actually, have to have some paint of it. I just so you don't really want white stick sticking up there. You just want a little bit of color. Even glaze over. You know, just get a get a leaf that's too bright. You can do that too. But all right, let's just say I wanted to. Say that those you can still see them, but they're um, they're glazed over now. On the other side, I think I'll just do a little purple. Just be a little more careful here. Okay, so now I've got those I've got those little fun sticks, but they're little twigs. Now that's that's one thing you can do. And then in a couple of places you actually may want paint. So let's just say like on this one this stick because it's in the foreground I'm going to actually use some paint on some of it, not all of it. Like that, see? So it depends a lot on um, you know where you need your highlights and like that kind of stuff like that and uh, sometimes you can just have like scary little let's see scary little um, vines hanging down like this it doesn't have to be much Okay, so you kind of see where we went with this. There's our stem. Yeah, we've got a you know pretty good looking pumpkin here. We didn't do much, right? We might have. Um, uh, let's just play with this for a minute. Oh. Suggest that something's kind of dripping down. You can do that. It's kind of creepy, but we can do that. So as then was we take some like white paint, we might want to come up here like this and just do the highlight on the top. Kind of nice, right? All right, so we've got, um, ooh, right? All right, so let's f let's finish our front pumpkins and uh, and finish it. I think pretty close to being done. You know, we just have what we're going to do finally is just have, you know, little odd highlights of color that are little dripping off the leaves and little little uh, orange twigs that are. Uh, 
Yeah, that kind of thing. We did a painting similar to this one year, but um, I think this one's more fun, don't you, John? Let's see, let's do a little lighter stem on him. Not that light, let's just put some color in it. But And um, so he doesn't really have any, the only white he has is these guys have some light yellow for the light on them. And um, uh, maybe a little bit of light orange on their uh, stem right here. Now let's let's make his eyes smaller. And his nose smaller. And sometimes you can just kind of adjust some stuff, right? Uh, before you get too too carried away. Kind of reshape him a bit. Now, So this is where I'm just kind of adding some leaves for contrast. I'll say part of it's darker than others. Just yeah, absolutely have to get put some some of those in here too. Remember, if you get th something too thick, you can take another dark color and um, just darken it up. You know, you know, you can darken it up, right? So let's get a new paper towel and. Uh, Oh, that's kind of fun, isn't it, John? Don't you think? Yeah. It's just... Um, really puts you in the mood to go out trick-or-treating. Well, you know, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, that's Halloween's like their favorite holiday. For an awful lot of people, this is just absolutely true. And, you know, and, you know, I, I think that's important. That's your favorite holiday. You should have a festive pain when you go with it. Took a little red kind of to find that um, pumpkin a little bit. 
And could we pop his eyes up a little more? I don't want him to be as bright as um, the main guy. That is the main guy. That's why I've kind of just, yeah, just didn't needed that much on him, right? We just he just needed to be, he needed to be glowing a little bit, but not that much, All right? So I think we're almost done with them. I'm just pretty close. I'm almost done. What do you think, John? I think you're closing Well, you know what? You never know when you start painting something like this how it's going to come out. Yeah. I miss that. I'll tell you what, I get so used to having a paper towel there that I can just wipe the paint off my brush. It's weird when I don't have it. See, I just need to do that. Um, I've got a brown Posca pen, and I'm going to just do something with these eyes. Earlier. Right? Let's just dry it, because I want to just give those eyes a little more definition. I don't know if that made any difference or not. Maybe it didn't, but I did still needed to dry it. Okay, so um, let's see. A couple of things I want to do. Uh, I think I'll just put the zinc white uh, somewhere here on this palette. Yeah, I just need a little bit of that because I want to take a clean brush and... Um, Grab some, flatten it out. Get that. Get that glowing feeling here that, you know, that you can do that because you, you've got it then, don't you? With the, um, There we go. Then that's this titanium white. Oh, to do two, to do two. Okay. All right, so we've got um I think we've got a very nice variety of uh, pumpkin here. A lot of people, well, you know, they're doing YouTube and they'll stop and say, well, I think it's done. But, you know, I always like to come back and make sure that I've got um, some little twigs to 
say you're going to have this pumpkin up for a little bit. Let's get his stem and bring his stem down into here a little bit on this guy. There we go. Let's try brown on that. Didn't want blue. Well, I don't want that. So that's one nice thing about it. if you dry in between, you get something um, that can be good. So what we're doing is going to get rid of the it's purple there. But I might want some a purple, a little bit more purple in the front here. from the window. There you go. Don't you think that looks pretty good when you do that? It does, doesn't it? Just... And then just say that there's a little bit more spookiness from the... It does, doesn't it? Doesn't it really add? There, it just never, never hurts to have that. And let's see, let me just take a look at my painting now. And um, uh, uh, let's try it and kind of erase our chalk marks, okay? See what we have, and you can find this a brown frame, yes? What do you think? Black. Okay. Are we done? Did you wipe it all off? No, I haven't done that. I just dried it. Now I'm going to wipe all the um, chalk off. Um, now see a couple of things I want to do a little bit differently. Um, I I thinking that's um that that looks pretty good. I I mean I could spend probably another couple hours on some detail, but I don't know that that would make it in, you know that would make that much difference. What do you think, John? Yeah, I knew I knew I wanted to come out here with this in front of this one and have this be a little brighter here. This this leaf right here. Okay, and uh, and but I feel like we did, right? There. I think that that's that's what I want. I think that would that's a fun um, Halloween picture. Yes and yes. Now, do you think the uh, bronze background added anything to it? I don't know that it made a difference. Do you think it did?
Yeah, I can't. I think that that looks right. Just okay. Well, that's all we're going to tweak. I think that's it. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to sign it because I think that if somebody does this, right, they should be, they should be, don't you think they should be pretty happy with it? Okay, yeah, there we go. That's it. I stop. There we go, folks. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody. Make sure you give it a old thumbs up. Absolutely. Yeah, and listen, tell your friends about us. We got some great, uh, we got some great videos, and we're happy to, to uh, you know, to share them. And um, and but we love it when you share them too, because it expands our audience and. And you know, word of mouth is the best form of advertising, and we appreciate when you do that. If you if you want to have personal art coaching and someone to really help you with this, that's possible in our academy still for under fifty dollars a month as a red member. So you might want to consider that too. And uh, it's just sort of fun to be able to get help with your paintings when you're doing it. It's like having me stand over your shoulder and say, "This is great," but why don't you try that? So think about it. Acrylic uh, acrylic painting with ginger.com, and uh, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.